So in the last week or so, there has been some talk about Bruno Fernandes potentially leaving Manchester United this summer, but even though I am a massive fan of Bruno Fernandes and I think the criticism that he receives is unfair, as I'll prove statistically later on in the video, you have to take emotion out of the picture when building a squad, which includes both buying and selling players, which a large portion of the Manchester United online fan base seem to not be able to do, with the likes of Varane, Wambasaka, Shaw and Casemiro all being players that United could have cashed in on heavily last summer, likely for in excess of £100 million combined. However, now Varane has left on a free, Casemiro will be lucky to get £25 million for, and that's only happening if he goes to Saudi Arabia. Shaw might not even be sellable with his injury issues, and Wan-Bissaka now only has one year left on his contract. And so for me, the fact that Bruno Fernandes will be 30 in September and only has two years left on his current contract means that if the right offer comes in for him, I think United have to at least consider selling him. However, he has to be replaced properly, which is going to be challenging, particularly financially. However, the reported fee I've seen banded around Twitter is around £125 million and £70 to £80 million for Casemiro. Now, there's no way in hell any Saudi Arabian club are paying that for Casemiro, a maximum of £30 million, surely, even for Bruno Fernandes. I can't see them paying that fee, but United need to get at least £100 million if they are selling to a Saudi club. So let's assume that it's somewhere between £100 to £125 million for the transfer fee. But before we look at how and who to potentially replace Fernandes with, let's actually statistically analyse him to see what we are actually replacing. But before I get into that, if you like me are excited for the upcoming Euros and are also a fan of retro jerseys, go over to Jersey FIFA, they've got all the Euro 2024 jerseys, the new season's jerseys when they come out, and retro club and international jerseys as well. If you use code ALANTIS at checkout, you'll get a discount. A link will be in my Instagram bio, which I will leave linked in the description. So statistically, even this season, Fernandes from a chance creating perspective has been pretty extraordinary, having the highest total XG assisted across the whole season, just slightly ahead of Hyung Min Son and second for the amount of passes he's completed into the penalty area, behind only Martin Odegaard. If we look at Bruno's FB Riff report, we can see that per 90, he ranks in the 91st percentile, which whilst not looking as impressive as the previous statistic I talked about, factor in also that Bruno Fernandes has played 3,118 minutes in the Premier League this season, whereas Michael Elise, a player who he is being compared against in this metric, played less than half of Bruno Fernandes' minutes with just 1,275. If we compare him to Phil Foden, who like Fernandes played over 3,000 minutes in the Premier League in total, he ranks in the 84th percentile for his XG assisted, showing that Bruno Fernandes' creative output is as good as it gets. And also consider that he's playing for a Manchester United side that had a negative goal difference and ranked in the bottom half for their total XG, ranking in 11th. Just imagine the sort of output that Fernandes could produce if United were at Liverpool's level, let alone Arsenal or City. He does rank around the 30th to 35th percentile range for his non-penalty goals and his non-penalty XG, which he only underperforms by 0.01 per 90, but back in 2020-2021, he ranked around the 60th percentile for both, having a non-penalty XG which was higher by 0.06 per 90, an increase of a third in terms of the goal scoring positions he was able to get into. In 2019-2020, this was around the 75th percentile for both, showing that not only does Bruno Fernandes consistently hit his non-penalty XG, but in a better offensive side, he without doubt adds non-penalty goals to his game as previous seasons have shown. If we go back to this season in the Premier League, the passing section shows you how creative Fernandes is, as he ranks in the 98th percentile or above, the top 2% of all attacking midfielders and wingers in the league, for his progressive passes, passes into the penalty area and final third, key passes, alongside the amount of long passes he has completed, also ranking highly for his short and medium passes, and to cap it off, ranking in the 97th percentile for both his switches and his through balls. And so this is why when people criticise Fernandes, I just say look at the stats. Yes, stats aren't the be-all and end-all, and you shouldn't only judge a player on their FB ref report, but you can't just write this off. His numbers are ridiculous, and this is in a side who offensively, statistically speaking, are nowhere near the top four or top six level, at least on this season anyway. And so if you are replacing Bruno Fernandes, you need to replace this insane creative output. But it's not just that. Fernandes' defensive output is also criminally underrated, as not only does he run and run for 90 minutes, barely gets injured, and pretty much plays every game throughout a Premier League season, but he also ranks in the 85th percentile and the 95th percentile for the amount of dribblers he has tackled and challenged respectively, as well as the 90th percentile for the amount of interceptions he's completed as well. 
Yes, I don't think he's defensively good enough to play in a midfield double pivot, but when compared against every other attacking midfielder and winger in the league, Fernandez's work rate and defensive output is as good as you can get, without a significant drop off creatively. Now his ball carrying and dribbling ability is his obvious weakness, as his FB ref report shows, but to disregard his ability based on this is insane. Every player has a weakness, and Fernandez is not a ball carrying midfielder, he's a creative playmaker, and so you can't expect him to produce a sort of ball carrying output that he does when it comes to his chance creation as even Kevin De Bruyne doesn't hit that sort of statistical level. But if you were replacing Fernandes you could make the argument that United do need someone with greater ball carrying ability through the centre of the pitch and capable of playing in a deeper central midfield role. Essentially you wouldn't replace Fernandes stylistically like for like which is a valid argument and one that I might even make myself. So let's assume Saudi Arabia do come in 110 to 120 million pounds. How do we replace Fernandes? Well, alongside Casemiro, that should be around 130 to 150 million pounds coming in. If you were replacing Fernandes with one player, it would have to be either Florian Verts or Jamal Musiala, someone of that level in terms of their chance creation, but also their ball carrying ability as well. However, I just don't see either of those two happening this summer because United don't have Champions League. And so I just don't see why Verts with Xabi Alonso staying and Musiala with just two years left on his buying contract don't just stay put for next season and move next summer. But this is also why I was saying mid-season that we can't just write off another season just because the fan base doesn't like sacking managers mid-season. Because yes, whilst they could turn it around, if they don't as Ten Hag hasn't, you end up in this exact sort of situation where you are massively handicapped in the transfer market if you are trying to sign elite level players that summer. And so for me with Musiala and Verts most likely, almost certainly being unattainable this summer, I'd go for an alternative plan. Now because the prospect of Bruno Fernandes going to Saudi Arabia for that sort of fee has only really come about in the last week or so, I haven't had time to come up with my definitive plan for how to replace him. And so I'll probably wait till after the manager situation is cleared up and after I release my initial who Manchester United should sign video for this summer. So subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you don't miss out on that. But let me just run you through my early thoughts. So I don't think realistically you can replace Fernandes with one player. I think you need to bring in one player who's going to add the ball carrying ability and the athleticism that United's midfield desperately needs and then sign another to replace Fernandes' creative output. You could go Premier League proven which would come at a premium but would be a lot less risky. Eze from Palace and Kudas from West Ham could be a good duo, with Eze being 26 and Kudas 24 by the start of next season. Eze would bring the much needed athleticism dribbling and ball carrying in central midfield, whilst Kudas would add goal scoring ability as well as flair and trickery to United's front line. But you'd still have to then fill that void of chance creation output with Bruno Fernandes out of the side. But this is why it's really hard to give a concrete answer as to how exactly I think United should replace Fernandes. Because at the time of writing we don't know who the next manager will be, the system they'll use and therefore the attributes they would need for new players being signed for specific roles. Jao Neves would certainly be a dream signing and alongside Mount and Mainu would create a midfield three that excels in athleticism, defensive output, ball retention and press resistance but that may require United signing more of a playmaker in the forward line. With Neves being stylistically different to Fernandes and therefore changing the structure of the whole central midfield from one focused on quick and direct attacks with high chance creating output to one more focused on building out of the defensive third and maintaining control of possession in the middle third. At the moment, I think Xavi Simmons would be ideal, positionally versatile, capable of playing in a midfield three ahead of a single pivot, or in more of a role akin to what Fernandes plays now, ahead of a double pivot, whilst also having certain winger-like traits, such as his burst of speed, dribbling ability, and trickery that could see him play in the forward line from either flank, moving into central positions, and with the fact that he's still only 21 years old, it seems like he could be the perfect replacement. However, PSG seem to have said that whilst he may be allowed to leave on loan, he won't be sold permanently this summer so maybe a loan deal if it's possible, although it does seem like he wants to go back to Barcelona on loan if that deal does materialise. Denny Olmo is another good option, also at RB Leipzig, versatile, producing a high level of creative output in the Bundesliga, but he is 26, and so he has to come in and within the next year or so, get to that elite level that United need, particularly with Leipzig likely demanding between 60 to 70 million pounds. But you could also look to spend the money on a cheaper version of Jao Neves, bringing a more defensive minded midfielder as well as a player to play from the right in the front three. And so I'm going to go through a few different options this week and so I will put out a more definitive answer on how to replace Bruno Fernandes with this video just being my initial thoughts. So how would you replace Bruno Fernandes? Let me know in the comment section and check the description for my Patreon and for some other videos as well.